set this to record. Yeah. So I want to apologize for not having the module up. It has been it has been a weekend and it will be a week. And that's kind of I I also have been productive, Anna, but the module's not up. It will be later this afternoon. So verbally, what we're doing is today we're talking about Teresa Tony. Um, we'll talk about academic writing a little bit more on Wednesday, and I'll introduce the discussion board. The discussion board will be up later this afternoon, and I will have a reading about writing centers. And that reading journal will be due on Saturday. So reading journals, you're summarizing, thinking about it, um, using MLA formatting, but they're not hard. You just have to do the reading. And I'll have that up later on today. I didn't want to plan too much for this week because my hope was, I assumed rightly that some of you are still working on your essays. Um, and that seems to be about half of you. And the rest of you, um, I wanted to give some breathing space. So I want to start out um, by doing a poem. Um, poem two. So these are the titles that you chose um, that your, you and your groups came up with expertise of Aztec students, what first year students have learned and what they want you to know, advice to fellow first year students, how SDSU students know more than you, um, literacy in students, how they connect, SDSU, a collection of students and life stories. And then I have another suggestion. That's not me, but it might be you. And so these are the titles that you all came up with. I want to go ahead and allow you to choose the one that you like best, the one you think would most appeal to first year students at SDSU. Okay, there's a few more people that haven't voted yet. Okay. So I was going to take the top three, but even if we added up all the other votes, it wouldn't equal SDSU, a collection of students and life stories. And so that seems to be consensus. Um, seven, nine, 11, yeah, there is no other one that stands out. Um, I like that, okay. So that's that. And I have one, you can see 16 people voted for SDSU, a collection of students and life stories. Um, I have one other poll. Let me close this one. Um, I have one other poll and let's do this one. Um, this one is just about how to organize the text, and um, one was by literacy, alphabetical order by title, um, birthday order, 
let the book flow as a whole, organized by emotions, organized by calls to action, or alphabetical by author. And Okay, two more people can vote. So we essentially have a tie. And so I wanna do, I wanna edit this and I want to, um, Add a poll, um, organization. Um, sorry, I'm typing up this poll as we talk. Um, organization. One of yours was by author, and one was by literacy. And so those two tied. And so let's um, literacy and by author, um, let's go to this. And I want to narrow it down because these essentially tied. and they still look tied. It's 11 to 11, 12 to 12. Thirteen to twelve. One more person? Why not Are both? <laughs> um, I think we're going to have to do both. Who was that? Was that Tuan or Derek? That was me. I was just thinking, uh, oh, um, yeah, you could do literacy. And then um, if someone has likes literacies, uh, there isn't too many cases of that, but you can just organize it by author in that scenario. Oh, now it's 14 to 13. Wow, that's really close. We're, um, we will end polling, share results. Yeah, that's super, super, super close. Um, yeah, that's fun times. Okay, um, and thank you very much. We will return to this on Wednesday. We'll return to this a few times over the next few weeks until we have that book up and running. And then we'll talk about, you know, like how do we, as I start to populate uh, the book template with your stories and your images, will come, I will, it looks like it's right now it's by author, but um, author first name or last name? Hmm. I'll ask you on Wednesday. Wednesday, all the essays will be in. So I'm sending you, I'm sending you a, slide, a Google slideshow. And I want to, well, let me, let me go to that slideshow. And um, yeah, you're just going to see Zoom right here right now. But uh, present. This is what we're doing today. And publishing votes done. We're going to talk about Teresa Tony. Um, just a reminder, submit your paper and reflection by Wednesday. And I will have a permission slip for you 
for the book. And that will be your permission to, for us to publish your text. And yeah, I'll have that for you on Wednesday before I start populating everything. I took the poll. So Teresa Tony, let's get back on that. What made this hard to read? Anybody? Um, I, I think what made it hard to read for me is that it was like really long and like there were so many um, citations. So it was kind of confusing to keep up with it like sometimes because I was like, like reciting it and stuff. I forgot like what um, what part it was at and trying to like go back and find it, it was like confusing. So that was probably what was challenging for me. The citations are crazy challenging. In the introduction in particular, um, most, peop most of her primary audience, they would be familiar with those authors that she was quoting and citing and they'd be familiar with the arguments. And that's one of those areas where if you're not the primary audience, those citations, can be really confusing. Um, what else was challenging? Um, I also think that it was just so different from the stuff that we've been reading so far, because a lot of the stuff, a lot of the passages we've been reading have been like narratives or like personal accounts, like more of like the personal essays that we were writing um, versus this one was very like logical and like informative. Um, in, a, in a sense, and the, there was like a lot of big words, a lot of complex sentence structure. Um, yeah, so it was just more like academic than, not saying that the other ones weren't well written, but it's like a different style of writing, I guess. That's, that's profound. I, I, I mean, like it's, it's, it's not good writing, bad writing, it's just different style. And that style, it's, um, it changes everything. And I, I want you to think about this in, in a new way. You wrote about how it was different from the personal essays. Um, in your groups, and I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna put you into brand new groups. Um, you may end up with some people you know, you might end up with some people you don't know but I want you to continue meeting new people from this class. Introduce yourselves and then talk about how Teresa Tony's article is similar to what you wrote in high school because there are some similarities, but there are some distinct differences, which some of you wrote about in your reading journals. And um, just take notes on the slideshow, so keep track of what group you're in. And then also write about what helped you navigate the text. Because Tony puts in a lot of different things. Um, she, some of the strategies that academic writers use are actually there to guide readers. So um, let me end share and put you in groups. There are 27 um, of you. And so what I'm gonna do is, um, put you in seven groups. Um, so there'll be three to four per participants. You see the slide deck um, in the chat. Somebody copy it share it and take notes. Whoever does that becomes the spokesperson, although any of you can contribute, okay? Questions before we go to the rooms? Okay. Let me share the screen. I know you all came up with some interesting ideas. Um, group one, give us a synopsis of what you discussed. 
So we were just talking about like, well, we really just went through the bullet points in order, right? So with the first one, for me personally, all of the writing that we did in high school was all MLA. Mm-hmm. So like the the formatting was all pretty like straightforward. Yeah, we understand what was going on, as well as the argumentation style with the argumentative essay. Most of my essays were, okay, you're giving a topic now push why you believe x or y right so it was similar in that it's the word i'm looking for that point and with the differences it was just the length right and personally i'm a really really long writer but that's that's just unique to me most of the time so all of my peers had shorter essays or were around the average length and oh it cut off a bit of oh, sorry it did it did it cut off what you helped you navigate the text um what made it, it easier one. okay so a big help for me was the realization of the main audience right because in my uh reflection of the reading i wrote that a lot of what was written down kind of flew over my head with like all like the big name drops that thani did But that was because, and you wrote a comment on it, that the people that are supposed to be reading the paper know who these people are. So when you realize that, a lot of it makes more sense. And following that, in the introduction, she kind of points out what she is going to be writing about with the five or six bullet points about the common things that writers do. And she just writes through like that. So that really helped understand and navigate the text. Yeah, she's signaling where she's going all the time. Um, Group seven, um, what else did you learn? All right, I can talk. Um, For the similarities, I think it was kind of similar to what Tuan was saying about um, how like the topic they write about is very much the same because Truth Tony was doing research on a topic that's already had a lot of research done on it and just like adding a new thing to it or a new finding. And in high school, we do like the same thing on like a classical book that like tons of students all write about and we're just doing like our own interpretation on it and writing like what we specifically pulled out of it, which was similar. Um, The differences we found, um, like citations, there's a lot more of it in Teresa Tony's than what we would do. And we were supposed to do MLA and cite books, but I know like I like never saw that in writing high school and didn't really do that much. And um, adding things like the subheadings and like bullet pointing stuff, we weren't really taught that you're allowed to do that in high school writing. So that's different. Um, Another difference is like the language she uses is very much like discipline oriented. So people in that discipline understand the language, but it's like completely foreign to any of the secondary readers. And like, I don't know what that means. (laughs) And yeah, <laughs> things that help navigate the text, like um, some of the differences, like the subheadings helps navigate the text, make it very clear what we're reading. Um, the different citations did not help us make it clear. Um, that's what we got. One thing you said pretty early, Kristen, is that she reviews everything everybody else said in order to add something new. And that's a really, really important aspect with the academic research paper genre is you do, you talk about different perspectives, research on the same topic and what different people say. And that reviews here, here's all those things that people have said and from there you you need to point out, here's what they haven't said, which she does in her very first sentence. She says, 
It's not surprising that so little attention has been devoted to identifying conventions that are universal in academic language. So here's what everybody is saying, but here's what they're not talking about. And that allows her to step into, we call it a gap um, or a niche, an opening. Which, was, which is very important. So she is able to say something that other people have not talked about. Um, groups two, three, four, well, any other group, something different that stood out to you that Juan and Kristen did not talk about? Um, something that helped me navigate the text was not only did she split her passage into the six different sections, but she also outlined her six main points in the introduction paragraph. Um, like she made it very clear what she would be talking about and like what categories they would be in. And I also thought that ending with the practical applications, like she, that were like italicized or something, I believe um, at the end, she ended with a few practical applications that her audience could use in their, coursework, I suppose. Um, I thought that was really good because I feel like sometimes after we read things, we just kind of forget because there was so much information and we just kind of forget what the main point was and we get lost and in, in trying to remember everything that she wrote. But by ending with those, I feel like it's a more effective way of getting her audience to, or at least informing and convincing her audience to use her strategies. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Andy. She doesn't she doesn't just repeat what she's already said. She sums some things up and then she talks about why it matters and what to do next. So it's like, based on everything I've just said, now what? Um, or why does it matter? And that's what an academic conclusion should do. Um, any Anything else that stood out to you? Um, one more, one more group. Anything? I think uh, what Andy said is really applicable not only for the the formatting aspect of how uh, she restated in the sense that it, uh, of why it mattered. I think um, our group noticed that a lot of these papers uh, were very straightforward with their approach, uh, not only in the the formatting aspect, but also in why and how they choose to tell you things. Um, they like to use uh, jargon or technical terms that's relevant to their uh, field of study. So like if they're doing engineering, then they'll use, I don't know, I'm not an engineering major, so <laughs> I don't really know all the jargon for it, but uh, you know, they'll, they'll probably talk about specific math terms that'll describe um, how to build an object or something similar to that. And I think they choose to use specific words and they phrase very specifically so that there's not that, um, that kind of guessing aspect that sometimes applies to more creative papers where like they lead you to a goal um, rather than I think in academic papers, it's not necessarily like holding the reader's hand, but you're definitely giving them a much clearer path to where they want to be. Uh, yeah, really good point. Um, academic writing is super straightforward. Um, it's, it's super straightforward. There's no subtlety. It's direct. There are explicit claims, still lots of examples, but explicit claims. Whereas in the personal essay genre, the claims are more implicit. And I wanna pull back to E. Shelley Reed and her third principle of writing rhetorically is to adapt to audience and purpose. And so if you're writing to first year students who are tired of reading textbooks and you wanna make them want to read, you've gotta find a different way because writing like Teresa Tony is probably not gonna be the way to get them to want to read what you are writing. Even the academic essays that you wrote in high school probably are not gonna captivate them, engage them, and make them 
want to know what's happening next. And so we really do need to be aware of multiple ways of writing and we need to be able to adapt to the people that we're writing to in order for us to fulfill our purpose. So Teresa Tony, um, I asked you in, in the reading journal, you know, like what appeals is she using? And almost universally you said, not pathos. And I agree there's, um, I suppose there's sort of some pathos in here somewhere, but not really. And, and you said ethos and logos um, primarily. And yeah, so this is ethos, it's, it's credibility, it's what she does to seem trustworthy to her primary audience. And always we're back to what do we do to construct ethos? Aristotle identified five things. Um, she seems knowledgeable, she seems to share audience values, she seems concerned for the audience, she seems objective or fair, she seems like a good person. Um, I'm going to put you in your groups again, and I want you to be more specific. How does she seem knowledgeable? How does she seem to share her audience values? Um, how does she seem concerned for the audience? How does she seem objective or fair? Point to something specific in the text. Now, I don't have a slide for you, so just take some random notes and continue that conversation. Again, I'm going to be really quick, but it is, um, let me just type this in the, how does she seem knowledgeable, seem objective, seem to share audience values, seem concerned for the audience, seem good. And that's what you're looking for in the text. So um, back in your groups, very briefly, and open rooms. So I think everybody is about back. Um, what is she doing to build ethos in here? Um, group two, I don't think we heard from you. Who's in group two? Um, I am. Okay, go ahead, Andy. So one of the things that we thought made her seem very knowledgeable was that in the beginning she talked, she listed out the different articles that she read about and that she researched with and all of them are very reliable sources like they all seem to be academic journals instead of just random like sites that anyone could have pulled up and edited um, and we also noticed that within these site within these citations and journals that she pulled up that they're all from a very they're just so different and um, like one's from psychology one's from like sports medicine one is about language and like an English one. One is like engineering, there's marketing research. Like they call, they come from a very, just such a, like a variety of sources from different subjects. And we thought that it made her more knowledgeable knowing a lot about different, using reliable sources for so many different like subjects. So something, somebody else, how does she share audience values and what values would you expect um, English teachers or writing teachers to have? Anybody? Um, we kind of talked about that, or I was thinking as educators, I had hoped that they valued educating their students. And I think she showed that a lot by a few times she specified how she noticed first years often struggled a lot because they didn't have the basic foundation to write and that ended up hurting them a lot in the future. So I would assume that other teachers would want to alleviate some of that for their students. But um, Derek also talked about um, how, sh or this is, I guess this is more for concern for the audience, but how enlisting like what the purpose is and um, further analyzing that and going from there, she like sets them up nicely and in a way that 
it's going to be easy for them. They don't have to struggle. Does that make sense? I think I'm really rambling a little bit. But, you know what? Um, I think you're really clear, Amaru. <laughs> yeah. Um, but showing that she like wants to be straightforward and she's not trying to like drag them around and she has a clear point. I think she shows that she cares about their time and that they want to like be educated as well. <laughs> I actually am really glad you noticed that because concern for the audience can, you know, like we think of that is like, oh, I don't want you to be hurt or I don't want you know, like, wow, that's really sad for you. That's one way to show concern, but demonstrating respect for their time, for keeping it straightforward, for guiding them from idea to the idea by laying it out straightforwardly, um, explicitly with benefits, challenges, that scene shows concern for the audience and um, what they need, um, which is a different way of thinking about concern. Uh, what about objectivity? How does she seem objective or fair? Any group? So one thing that I noticed is that when like she like gives certain suggestions for the audience and then she kind of makes it fair by using those suggestions. So for example, like one of the things that she says is that it makes it easier for your audience when you write in kind of like a structured way and like you tell them like what you're gonna talk about before you actually talk about it. And then in her own essay, she uses that. And so I think that that kind of shows that like she's like not just saying things like she's like showing that it works. Yeah, good. Any other way she sub seems objective or fair in here? I think a way that she shows she's objective or fair is by, um, is like Andy touched on this a bit, but by using like the variety of sources. So they're not all from one um, specialization. And so she's showing that she's not just looking at like English essays about books and whatnot. She's looking at um, a variety of essays. And so she's saying like, it's objective because she's saying, like pointing out in each of these that they all use these strategies. Yeah, uh, that's good. I mean, if she were really biased, she could have chosen specific essays to analyze, specific journals, but she's got such a broad point and she makes a point of saying these were randomly chosen. Um, so that makes her seem objective. I'm just gonna say one more thing um, that makes her seem objective. And that is that in her introduction, which is the first three pages, she doesn't only present texts that present one point of view. She presents um, what scholars have said where they disagree. Some say this, some say this, some say this, some say this. And so she's examining the ongoing academic conversation from multiple vantage points, just not her own bias. And by looking at where people disagree, she, it allows her to come in and say, seem objective in what she's doing. Now, let me stop the share. Um, we have two minutes left to go. Um, so let me sum this up as we move forward. Um, watch for the discussion board, watch for the reading if you want to jump ahead. Otherwise, there is nothing due on Wednesday except for that essay. And I will see you back on Wednesday where we can finish up talking about Tracy Tony, and I'll introduce the next text in case you haven't already read them. So I'll stick around for a couple of more minutes and answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, you are free to go. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I had a question. <laughs> um, yeah, Reese. I was just 